Good morning guys and welcome back. So today I'm gonna to show you how to replace the front wheel speed sensor on your Jeep Wrangler JK. Now this might be slightly different for the 2012 upwards. This is a 2010, so from 2007 to 2011, this will be exactly the same. So the wheel speed sensor is this little sucker here. It runs up down your shock tail here. Right behind where that tower is is a little clip. We'll get to that. And it runs all the way down to behind your rotor here so what we have to do is remove your whole brake assembly comes off in two pieces and then also remove your um, rotor there now this is a pain in the ass to get off it might not be for you but if it is for you i'll leave a little link just up in the corner here or there um, as a quick tip to get that out which we'll be using this little guy here so to remove all this um, to get to your um, front speed sensor on your JK you'll need a 24 millimeter socket um, I didn't actually have one so this is a tie iron out of my wife's Mazda CX-3 you'll need a ratchet with a 13 mil socket on it and a adjustable um, spanner um, to use it for this section just here um, some um, little vice clamps uh, will definitely come in handy a knife to be able to cut the cable ties which hold the um, wheel speed center to the brake and an allen key there's a small allen key that actually holds the speed sensor in to the actual hub so that's pretty much all you need and some good lighting and a little bit of time for me um, my um, brake assembly here actually broke on the other side so just be very careful with this my one was very brittle so if your car has been for driving up the beach a lot of corrosion and it's your first time working on it just be very mindful of that my one broke that little connection there broke so all this is very easy to do should only take you about an hour to an hour and a half depending on what issues you run into a lot of things i had to kind of come up with like getting this brake rotor off and i actually broke the wheel speed sensor off inside the hub so this should have like a little um sensor that comes off the end here that actually broke off inside the hub so i'll let you i'll leave another link just up there on how to get the broken part of the wheel speed sensor off if that happens to you so that's pretty much it um, let's get to it really simple job and that's all you'll need so let's get on to it so the first two bolts we'll be taking off is this one here which has got the little nut on the opposite side and this one just down here now those two I've already loosened them but that's a 13 mil so you need your ratchet and a 13 mil socket and then your adjustable spanner to hold this nut here tight and then See how that one moves? It's like the, I'm not sure what it's called, the little compression part. Once you've done that, they will take your brake center assembly off. Then you can just place that out of the way so you don't break just place that up there and place that to the side and these two will go back in yeah so you can either thread those back in so you don't lose them and that will give you more view of what you're working with now the next two bolts we'll be undoing are the, that one there and this one here these are the 24 mil bolts which might have a little pressure, they might be torqued. Alright, now that you've got the brake caliper off there, and if your um, caliper wasn't stuck, uh, if it was stuck, I hope you guys watched that video, it's a very helpful tip. But if yours just comes straight off, Bam, there we go. Done. And then reveals the wheel spin sensor just there. You can see how nice ours looks. Ours is all corroded and crappy looking. Fantastic. So this is where you get your Allen key. And if it was in good condition, and kind of pop it in there, but you can see ours is all rusted and corroded. So we have to go, we're gonna go through and 
clean that up um, actually make sure we don't actually fret it with that because our last one we're probably a fine tooth away from actually f um, stuffing up that thread there and being in a world of trouble so we're gonna go along clean that up and we're gonna get that off and I'm gonna show you the process of undoing that and actually threading it through your dust shield there all right see you soon all right now we've got this little grommet out that was holding the uh, speed sensor in just here we can go along and we'll put that in a safe place I did have to get a flathead screwdriver and just tap it lightly one corner it was just a little bit corroded and rusted as you guys can see no big deal so now we can go along and actually remove the speed sensor itself now these is where the uh, what do you call these alligator clamps whatever they're called uh, come in handy because it's very tight in there um, or you can get a flathead screwdriver and kind of just lift it up through the corner but with these you can clamp it and twist a little bit and pull straight up she's wedged in there you can see it coming There we go. Go all the way up. So now you can pull that dust shield this way and try and to. This is where it becomes a little bit tricky because there's not much room between where this sits, that little gap they've cut out for the dust shield. Um, and pulling this through so it's not too much of an issue you do have to bend your dust shield a little bit I'm trying to it's not too bad when you're taking it out but when you're trying to put the new one in you don't want to damage it so there we go one speed sense oh that might be my bad one see how much corrosion kind of is around where that o-ring sits and there's a little bit of dirt on there as well so go along get a knife cut cut pry that off and then we can the fun job of actually getting around the back and undoing the plug all right now that we've got the old one out that was actually a lot easier than the first one just because i knew which clips to push it kind of clips in there you got to pull that red tag out and then push down on the black one that releases that section there that's a good idea to get your new one and kind of measure it out for some reason my new ones are longer which doesn't really matter it matters if they were shorter but for some reason my new one's longer so that's my new one that's my old one you can see the difference in the plug between the new and old one hopefully it makes a difference in turns lights, those little lights off. Anyway, put the new one in, rebolt anything, we're good to go. All right guys, that's pretty much it for today. If you guys found this video helpful and if you guys did watch when we removed the actual brake caliper and that little handy tip if you found these videos useful and helpful and if you like this different sort of style of editing instead of see my face just go straight on to the actual what we're doing itself please let me know in the comments below if it did help you i love making videos that actually help you guys and get a benefit from um and let me know um if you would like to hit the like button and subscribe button as well We'll have heaps more of these videos in the same the same sort of style and same helpful sort of style as well. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys next week.